Hello, Team Rainbows and Pixie Dust. I am Crystal, and I am super excited to be here. We'll see if anybody jumps on. I think, I think I'm in the right place at the right time. So here we go. First of all, thank you, Essie, for asking me to train. This is so exciting and a, and a little bit intimidating because this is a huge group. So hi, Jennifer. Thank you guys for hopping on. I'm super excited to talk about this. Hi, Kristen and Heather. So fun. This is just crazy. Um, a little bit about me before I get started. My name is Crystal Stephenson. I live in South Dakota where we have a ton of snow and it's freezing cold. And I joined Color Street in October of 2017, not really intending to do anything but buy the product. Hello, everybody that's hopping on. Um, and I'm a senior director now, which is super exciting. I love leading a team. Um, I love being part of this team. Isn't this team awesome? All the trainings that Essie has lined up have just been amazing. So I have been enjoying them and I'm really excited to get to share now. Um, yes, Amanda, I love, I love organization too. So I'm excited to share this with you guys and I hope it can help. Um, so I joined in October of 2017. I had never done direct sales before. I, like I said, I kind of was just thinking the product was cool and I was going to use it for myself and you know, it caught on fire obviously. And so here I am a senior director leading a team, and I have struggled with customer follow-up. Hey, Nicole, good to see a familiar name. Um, so I have done quite a few different processes and programs trying to find the perfect customer follow-up system, and I feel like I finally have, so I hope that this can help some of you guys in here. Um, the first thing I want to say is just to encourage you that we all like organization differently and so if you're doing something right now and it's not working for you and you're you're struggling and you're not easily being able to follow up with customers then don't keep beating your head against the wall and find something that works for you because i wasted a lot of time thinking hello sc um like i started a system and i was like i'm gonna commit to this and it was months of like it just wasn't working for me and i wish i would have um, tried something different sooner because you guys customer follow-up is it's business changing if you are not keeping track of your customers and what they're ordering and when they're ordering and you're not following up with them you are totally missing out on building that relationship with them taking care of them like going the extra step for them so customer follow-up is in my opinion, one of the most important things. And so you have to find a system that you love and that you can easily follow. Um, one of the things I tried, absolutely, Essie. I tried Trello. So if you are if you like things on the computer or on your phone, Trello is, is really a great system, but I don't, I can't do online follow-up. I, I need th something at my fingertips. I need to see it on paper. That's just what I have learned through this whole process is that that's how I do follow up better. Um, so I tried some computer type programs. I you know tried an Excel worksheet because I kind of like Excel um, and, and it wasn't working. And I happened to be watching a training in a, in a different group that had nothing to do with Color Street and they mentioned a customer follow-up binder and I was like what is, what are they talking about so I actually went on YouTube and searched it and I found a ton of videos on how to create a customer follow-up binder and so I thought okay I'm gonna try it so here we go here is my customer follow-up binder um, I'm kind of a perfectionist so I had to do it exactly the way they did it I agreed Essie that is that is how it is for me um, you do not have to go spend a bunch of money to do this. If you have an eight and a half by 11 binder that you want to use, use that. Like, you know, if you're on a budget, you don't have to go spend a bunch of money to make this work, but I'm just going to tell you what I did. 
So this is a smaller nine by seven binder because I like to be able to take this with me so it's very portable. I got all of this stuff at Target. I know that it's available on Amazon too if you're an Amazon girl. Um, but it's a nine by seven binder. And then I have, there's pockets in here that I'm gonna go through with you. And so there's these punch, hole punched pockets that are in here. And then I also got some, some lined paper that I put at the back too so that I can make some extra notes. So um, all of this was available at Target. If you want more specifics on it, I will share those when I get done. Um, so the way I do my follow-up is I do one week, one month, three months. Um, some people do like one day, two weeks, one month, some, you know, whatever you do, you can customize it to this. So I'm going to just show you how I'm doing. Okay. So my, how I have this divided is I have a to be ordered section. And so if like, for instance, when the Easter sets came out, if I had pre-orders with that, that I was taking before they became live, I wrote them up on these sheets. And if it's okay with Essie when I'm done, I will share this. I just created this in a Word document and it's two on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and then I just cut them in half. So I'll share these because that takes half the work out of it too and you guys might as well use them. So I would write up something on a sheet like this if it was a pre-order and then I would put it in here for to be ordered so that when they go live, I have... I have them all there and organized and ready to go. And I know who ordered what, and this way I can write them down as they're being ordered because otherwise, you know, you lose track. You have like a little piece of paper that you're making tally marks on, you know, and then you have to go back and figure it out. Um, so that's my first tab is to be ordered, and that's how I would use that, okay? Then if I've ordered it off the website, I put it into this tab, ordered, okay? The other way I use this too is I do a lot of inventory sales. So I have a lot of inventory on hand that I sell to people. So for example, this gal um, last night commented on a post I had made and she wanted a mint to be. So I just went in this morning, wrote up this sheet with what she wants mint to be. She said that she wants to take a look at a couple other things. So I just have this in my ordered tab right now because she's going to add a couple to it so I have not shipped this out. This is just an order. So that is in my ordered pocket there. Okay. So then once once that we'll just follow this order, okay? And ask questions. I hope I'm not going to confuse you. So once I ship this to her, Oh, okay, sorry, I have to go to this. I have a pending delivery. So for example, this was a customer order on my website. So when a customer orders on my website, I go and I just print out the invoice that is under your customer orders in your virtual office because there's no sense in going and rewriting all this. You have everything that you need there. You have the order number, you have their address, their email, everything you need is here for you. So if somebody orders on your website, I personally print it out at like 75% because that way I can cut it down so it fits nicely into my pocket. So this gal, for instance, she ordered, her order just shipped yesterday. So it has a shipped date of 311. So it has not been delivered to her. And just again, for me and how I like to do this, I don't really start my count of time as far as one week, one month, three months until they actually receive their order. So I kind of keep track of these pending delivery orders until I know that they have reached the customer, okay? So right now, her order shipped yesterday and I'll just go in. I, I usually know that it takes two or three days to get to a customer, so I'll kind of keep an eye on it. So for right now, it's in my pending delivery. But as soon as I get an email notification that a customer has ordered from my website, I go back into my virtual office and I print this and I put it into my pending delivery so that I, again, it's just in front of my eyes seeing that somebody ordered um, and then I can be watching on it, okay? So then once I know that the order has been delivered, I start my count. And 
this is how I keep track of it and I will share this too. I've created a label and I use, I use these shipping labels, um, two by four, and I have this all made up in a Word document too, so I'll share this too. So I put this little sticker on the back that has the order date. Um, there's a check mark for if they're in my VIP customer group. So if they're not, that's just another visual for me that it's something I can bring up in my follow-up, um, depending on the conversation, to be able to offer that to them to join my VIP group, okay? So her order date is 3-7, and again, this is the one that I'm following that just shipped yesterday. So as soon as I have a delivery date, I am going to put a delivery date here, and then I, then I will write in, let me show you one that's done. Okay, so like this one. Her delivery date was 3-7, so then her one week follow-up date is 3-14. I'm sorry, this is probably backwards. Um, <laughs> thank you, Michelle. This, this, this is my personality. And if I don't do it this way, I don't do it at all. So here's her one month, 4-14, and then her three months is 6-14. And then I also have this handy reminder at the bottom that says, thank you. So if I, once I get an order and I have printed it off and I have it in my pending orders, then, hey Lori, my cruise friend, um, then I have this reminder here too to send her a thank you card. And so that was something that was hard for me too. I really, I like sending handwritten thank you cards to anybody that orders from me. Um, and so when you're mailing your own inventory to people, it's really easy to slip that card in there because you're already sending them something. But if you have an online order, again, like if you aren't printing out the order and visually seeing it in front of you, then sometimes I wasn't on top of the thank you card like I want it to be. And there's information that I want to get to them before they start applying their strips because sometimes you end up with customers that have never applied them before and you want to be able to give them some tips and tricks um, before they start applying them. Yes, it has to be Essie. I, and honestly, you guys, I, I've been doing this for like five months and my, my, my um, reorders, the customers that are reordering, has totally changed because of follow-up because I'm keeping track of who is ordering and when they're ordering. And I think because I'm sending those handwritten thank you cards, I think people really appreciate it. So yeah, it is Lori. So this, this has totally made it something that's doable for me and I don't forget. Okay, now I have to make sure I put these back in the right place or I'm gonna get done with this and be a hot mess. Okay, so, so I've got Jen here in my one week and her one week date was 314. So on 314, I will send her um, some sort of message. Usually I will put on the front here like what, um, what the way of communication has been that they prefer. So if it's private message, email, you know, sometimes if it's an online order, all you have is email. Um, or if it's text messaging, whatever it is. Yes, Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Let me see if I can see all your comments. You're putting your thank you card. Okay, so so at the one week, so with um, Jen here, for example, it depends a little bit on if they're a repeat customer or um, if it's a if it's a first time customer okay so jen for example is a repeat customer so when i follow up with her after one week i'm basically just going to be saying hey i want to make sure that you received your nail strips and and you love them as much as i do or something like that you know just something to say hey did you get your nail strips um can't wait to see which set you try first just pretty simple um, because even after one week of receiving them, sometimes people get busy. You know, have you put, have you tried a set yet? Which one did you do first? What do you think? Um, and I might even be able to because I have this. Now she just got one set here, but if they got multiple sets, I might call out one of them and say, um, 
Mardi Gras is one of my absolute favorites um, because sometimes they have a hard time picking. Like if they ordered four or five sets, they don't even know where to start. And so I might call one out and just say, hey, this has been one of my all time favorites. It goes with everything. Um, just maybe to spark them into actually doing it. So one week, it's pretty basic. Just, hey, did you receive it? Okay. Um, and I'll keep answering those, Jenna, as I go through here, because I just want to keep kind of following this. Okay. So that's my one week folder, my one week message app. These are all in order. So like my next one week is 314. So the, the nice thing about this is every day that I set aside time for follow-up, I can just come in here, look at the back here to see what date it is, pull the ones out that I need to do, do them, and then they get moved. Because after I have followed up with Jen for her one week follow-up, then I'm gonna check mark that. If she replies something specific, um, like that she that she's super excited to try a certain set or she's saving a set for a special occasion like a wedding, I'll make a note. I've got some extra room down there underneath the date where I'll make a note to say, um, got Tokyo lights for her sister's wedding, which is on April 1st, something like that, just because I can use that information in follow-ups that happen after that. And again, I couldn't do that before because I wasn't keeping track of any of that. And so if somebody mentions that they got sets for their bridesmaids for their wedding, I've had that happen, or even for their own wedding, and I ask, oh, that's exciting, when's your wedding? I will make notes of that so that I can include, um, it's just, a, it's about building the relationship with that customer. And so when there's special things happening in their life, you wanna be able to connect with them on those things, okay? So once I follow up with Jen on her one week, she gets moved to the one month. And again, that would, if I'm doing this every day like I want to, Molly, it depends on what um, they prefer. So if I get an online order and I don't otherwise know them, um, I will email them. And then again, kind of starting the, the relationship with them, if they respond to that email, I'll ask them what their preferred method of communication is because maybe they would like to connect um, on Facebook. That's also a way to say, hey, did you know I have a Facebook group? If they're not part of it, um, if they're part of my Facebook group, then I use private messenger. Um, if it's somebody that I've met at a vendor event, usually it's text message that, that I have. And, and again, I've learned this through somebody's training that I always ask what their preferred method of communication is because that's how I want to reach them. That's how they're more likely to respond back to me. And that's what we want, right? So I'm glad you guys are liking this because it has changed my life. Okay, so now, now we've moved her into one month and she would go in the back because these are all staying in order as I'm following up with them, okay? So now I've got Charlie here, who she's in my one month follow-up. Um, and as you'll see here, I've got her dates since the beginning. Yes, Lori, I will share all of this. I'll share the labels um, and these the, the written order forms if you wanna use that too. Um, so for instance, on Charlie's order here, you'll see that um, when I followed up with her on February 18th, um, through the conversation of just asking her if she got her sets and she said, yes, I already put this set on and I love it. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Hey, you know, since you're loving them, maybe you'd be interested in hosting a party in March and getting some strips for free. And so she said, yes, I would love to. So then I made a note on here too that she wants to host a party in March so that I am following up with her on that. Sorry, my daughter called me who is in the house somewhere and knows that I'm doing this. I um, have two girls that I homeschool, so they're here. They know I'm in here, but all you moms can relate, right? <laughs> oh, Essie, you're so sweet. Um, Again, I'm going to say this again. I struggled until I found this system, you guys. So you got to find something that works for you. Yes, Lynn, I will get to that. Yep, I do. Okay, so now I moved Charlie to my one month, okay? Then I have three months. And, and also, if you weren't here in the beginning, if you want to do, like if your system is already set up that you're doing, um, 
you know, two days, two weeks, a month, whatever it is, you can do that this however you want. It doesn't matter. Um, the label file that I have is totally changeable. Okay, so now I've got three months. So then I've got um, the gals that I need to follow up with on their three month, which the next one in here is 320. So by three months, it is hard, Nicole. Let me, sometimes I can't see all the comments. Yeah, that's how I was too. This solved it. Um, so by three months, if they have not reordered, I am probably messaging something. Um, it's so hard for me to give verbiage, you guys, because I feel like I do it tailored to what the conversation has been prior to this. Um, I definitely have my fair share of people who don't respond and that I will write on here. So, um, like this, this is actually one of those people. So I've sent her two emails. She hasn't responded. Um, her follow up, her next follow up is 320. And so I'm going to send her another follow, send her another email. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Hey, our spring line is just launched yesterday. Cause that will be the 19th when it launches. Um, and ask her if she would like to see what's available for the new spring line or if she wants more information on the set. So I kind of tailor it according to what our communication has been back and forth. If they aren't responding by three months, I'm just saying, you know, hey, I just wanted to follow up. It's been three months since you made your purchase. I want to make sure that you're absolutely loving your strips. If there's any questions that I can answer, I would I would love to help and make sure that you're happy with what you've received. Um, you know, sometimes you hear from them, sometimes you don't. So with a new spring line coming, um, that's gonna be what's incorporated into my follow-up for anybody that is even close to that date is just, you know, guess what's coming in two days, our spring line is launching. Um, if you aren't already part of my, you know, if they're not part of my group, that would be a good time to say, uh, if you join my Facebook group, you'll get first look at the new sets that are launching before they're even available, something like that to try to draw people in because if you can get them into your Facebook group, they're seeing you more than just through the communication on text or email. So here's my three month. Um, Sometimes after three months, the one of the systems I watch, they kind of just, if they don't hear from them, then, you know, they just move them. But, like, they're just kind of done. And I didn't really feel good about that. Um, well, Molly, fortunately that has not happened a lot for me. Um, if they are on... Yep, Lacey, I will post that when I get done. Um, I'm trying, let me think here a second, Molly. I think the, the last time I had somebody who who wasn't real happy, I just sent her a set. She didn't like how Rio Red applied for her. Um, I think that it was really cold when she applied her nails and I don't think that her hands were warm just from the conversation with her. Um, I think the most important thing to remember about when somebody isn't satisfied is we have to not be on the defensive because that's like immediately one of what we want to do is we want to defend it because we love the product and, and generally there aren't issues with it. So don't go at it from a defensive side. Just talk through it with them and ask them just, you know, genuinely, you know, I'm sorry that you weren't satisfied. What what weren't you happy with? Maybe I can help you figure out what, um, what the problem was. I had a lady who, you know, sometimes you post like millions of times how to do the correct application to your group and they don't always see it. And so I always tell people to use the prep pad before and after. Well, in talking through her and what she was doing, that wasn't something that she was doing. And again, like if I would have been defensive about it and said, well, you know, nobody else has this issue or I'm, I don't know what to really say, we probably wouldn't have come to the conclusion that we did. And by the end of the conversation, she was like, oh, I guess I didn't even know to do that. And I said, well, try that next time. And if, you know, if you're still 
not happy with how it applies, then let me know. And sure enough, she used the prep pad before and after her application and it was fine. So if you just talk through them and what they're not happy and try to help give them three or four different solutions because everybody's nails are different. Um, like if you live in South Dakota right now and you've been in the minus 20 or 30 degree weather, if your hands are cold when you're applying those strips, they're gonna not, they're just not gonna work the same way as if you're in California where it's, you know, 70 degrees. So you just have to work through it with them and find the solution. And normally by doing that, you're gonna have a lifelong customer because you've taken the time to help get them through. And at the end of the day, if I really have somebody who just seems to be upset, I will send them a free set. Um, maybe not even telling them that I'm gonna do that, just to tell them I appreciate their business and I want them to be happy with it because um, we get free sets through hostess rewards and things like that. And so, um, yeah, and you're gonna have those people, Molly. Not, I mean, some people are just, I, I'm not gonna swear, so that's just how some people are. And, and you can't fix everything. So if you're offering a discount and some tips and tricks, um, I don't know what more you can do. <laughs> okay, I hopefully I'm, this is, we're moving along here. Okay, so I, after, after three months, I created a one month three follow up. If I haven't heard back negative, negatively from them, like they never wanna buy Color Street again, then I will just keep following up. Sometimes, um, you know, people will, they'll be in a party and they'll buy nine or 10 sets and maybe they don't use them as quickly as they thought they were going to. And, you know, they just still have strips, but I, I just don't want to lose contact with them. So I created a one month refollow up. And at this point, I'm just writing notes on the back of the, on the back of the order form at the bottom. Let me see if I have one not really following with that sticker anymore because it's just, I just don't want to lose them. So one month three follow up if they haven't ordered anything. And this is again, another great time where um, if we have the spring line launching, these would be people that I could easily reach out to. So I'm not losing track of them. And maybe it's not even quite to the one month three follow up, but if we have something happening um, like, like Easter or spring or eventually petites. Like there are people in here who I know that when we have some big things happening, I'm just gonna be sending them a message and telling them about what's going on. So I've got the one month refollow up, three month refollow up. Um, I have a couple gals in here who they like, for whatever reason, ordered like 16 sets from somebody's party. And so they, they're, they need to start giving them away or they're never gonna order again, right? But I don't wanna lose track of them, so I'm still updating them when we get new things and I'm still keeping them in here so that I don't lose track of them. Um, I did send out Christmas cards at the end of 2018, so another reason to not lose track of these customers because that they placed some big orders. Um, I had these sheets in here, so then I marked as I was sending Christmas cards so that I could keep track of who I sent those out to also. And then the last um, folder I have is for reordered. So if somebody reorders that's somewhere in this system, when they reorder, I move their order here. So like here's Nicole's order that she placed in January, but now she she's the one who messaged me yesterday for an order. So I wrote up a new order. Her follow-up timeline starts over again, and then this order just gets... Um, filed back here and then eventually I just alphabetize them so that I always have um, I can see what they've ordered and so if something similar comes out in the spring line like I can look at what Nicole has gotten in the past what color she's been drawn to and say hey Nicole um, saw this set on our new spring line and I thought of you to make it more personalized um, let me see. Oh, gotcha. It's each order, Stephanie. 
Um, so it's each order. So if somebody places a new order, then I move their previous one into the reordered section and I start a new sheet for them. If like around um, Black Friday, Christmas time, I had some people who were, you know, ordering pretty close together. I put some of those on the same sheet just because their follow up time was going to be within a week or two and I didn't want to bombard them. So some of those I combined, you kind of just use your judgment on that a little bit. And Michelle, I did it to anybody who had purchased in the last six months when I did Christmas cards. And again, if I had not went back and started this, I would that would have been a disaster. I don't even know how, how I would have done it. Which, what I wanted to say too is getting started. When I started this follow-up binder, it was a hot mess express, didn't really have a super good system. So you just have to start somewhere. I went online into our virtual office and I printed three months. I printed the previous three months of orders. So, you know, if you were gonna start today and you feel like, I don't even know where to start, I would go in your virtual office, I would print off who's ordered in the last three months and I would just, just start with them print them off, um, follow up with them today. Hey, Stephanie, follow up with them today and start their timeline from today. And what I did with quite a few of those people too, if they had ordered, you know, three months ago and I really wasn't sure if I had followed up well with them, I just said, hey, I feel like I haven't done great at follow up and I'm going to be getting better at this. So starting today, Tell me how you're loving your Color Street nail strips. What have, what have been your favorites? Um, tell me what your favorite thing is. Something like that just to start the conversation and to say, hey, I wasn't doing a great job of following up. I really appreciate you as a customer and I wanna make sure that you're 100% happy with everything that you have gotten. And then you just start from today, you start. Um, I would probably, if it was me, and it was somebody that ordered quite a while ago, I probably wouldn't follow up with them a week from today. I would follow up, you know, reach out to them today and then go follow up with them one month from now, three months from now kind of a thing. Okay, so Sherry, I think somebody else asked that too. So then, I in the very back in this little pocket, I have an Excel worksheet that I made for samples and I'll share this in the group too so that you guys can print this out. So because once I was getting good at follow up with orders, it was like, okay, well now we need to do something about samples because that was falling behind too. So I printed up this Excel worksheet so that I could keep track of people that I was giving samples to. So it just says name, date sent, how sample was requested, like whether it was in a party, um, you know, through a new person in my VIP group, maybe it was at a vendor event or just at the grocery store, like how how did I meet them? How did they ask me for the sample? And then any notes that I wanna know just again, so that I'm creating a personal relationship with them. And then I have the same system for samples. So I have a one week follow-up, a one month follow-up and a three month follow-up. And so if I follow up with them after one week and they say, you know, I absolutely love it. I wanna place an order and give them my link, they place an order. Then I'll just put order, you know, order placed. Here's one from the past, you know, placed order. So then they just get moved into the follow-up system that's with my with my order. So I will share this too. Same kind of system as far as one week, one month, three months for sample follow-up. And then I just keep that in the back so that every day when I'm sitting down for follow-up, I just start with each folder go through and look at the dates and, and if it's today's date, then I send those people a message. Um, another thing that I think has worked better for me is trying to reach out to people when it's convenient for them. For me, it's convenient to reach out to them at one or two in the afternoon, but I, don't, I didn't get a very good response rate then because most people are working or you know something else is going on. So I save my customer follow-up for the evenings that seems to be when I get the best response from customers. And, you know, we're all busy and, and sometimes people see your message and, and think, oh, I need to respond to them and they don't. So if you can catch them where they can just respond right away, 
it's a lot easier. Um, okay, so Jenna, I think you had also asked what I send in my thank you cards. So in my thank you card, I send my business card with, it's got how to apply instructions on the back, but then it also has my um, Facebook group and email in that in case they are not part of that group already. And then I also send um, some information on how the strips are not supposed to be used a second time. Um, I live in the Midwest and we, the people here do not throw anything away. And so I can tell them that the strips are one time use only, but they are not, it, they will not throw them away. Like if they have extras, they're going to save them. So I had to create something to be able to say, these strips are not guaranteed for a second time use. They're one time use only. If you choose to save them, they are not guaranteed. And then I include that in there too, because what was happening is, you know, you're saying don't save them, but people are trying to save them because they will not throw anything away. Not even one or two strips, seriously. So I include that too. And then, um, and then it's just the handwritten note. That's, that's what I put in my thank you cards. Just, you know, thank you for your purchase. I appreciate your support of my business. And usually again, I'll call out, I'll say specifically like, um, I love the sets that you ordered. Tokyo Lights has been one of my all time favorites. Or, you know, if I see you ordered these two sets, they would be so fun mixed together for a mixed Manny kind of a thing. Um, if I have a really good customer who's repeatedly ordered, I might also throw a Tuesday in there if I see that she ordered, um, like let's say she ordered at the plaza and I have a um, Tuesday of Tokyo Lights. I might throw that in there and say, hey, um, this would be a fun accent nail to put with at the plaza. And another thing that I've recently started doing, um, we, we get a lot of questions on the solid sets and the design sets and, and how they last differently than the glitters and some of the cracking. And so um, my sponsor, Erin Bossler, had done a training in her group suggesting that we really encourage and inform people on clear as day. So if I have a new customer who orders mostly solids and designs, I break open a set of clear as day, you know, there's two sleeves in there and I send them one set of 16 clear as day and tell them, just kind of explain a little bit about the solids and designs and how you'll get much better wear or longer wear out of the solids with this clear as day. So try this with your clear, you know, with your solid sets and see what you think too. Um, Cause again, to break open a set like that and to just send them one sleeve, it's not a huge, investment and if they haven't really tried the solids or designs before um you'll hopefully be saving some complaints and questions by giving them that option to use clear as day so i do that too so that is what i send in a thank you um let's see i've never heard of that michelle punch bowl Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's not perfect. I don't have a hundred percent response rate. Um, but I'm in control of it and I know that I am doing my very best to reach out to everybody and make sure that they're happy and tell them when there's special things going on. Um, like when meant to be, came out and you know if you have somebody who you know likes those that color palette to be able to message them specifically like I would really suggest even using the back you know this all the space on the back here that you can write notes on um, your conversations with them so that when things come around you can easily flip through and see who it applies to and connect with them and go that extra mile because if you do that you're gonna have a customer for life so you're welcome, Essie. If anybody has any other questions, let me know. I would, I'll be happy to help. And like I said, I will post all of those things, all those files. Um, 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Sherry, you are at the perfect time to start because you're you're technically not behind yet in my mind. Um, but to all of those that have been here forever, don't use the excuse of you don't know where to start. Just start somewhere. Even if you just start today, just the orders that you get today, start filling this out. And then as you have time, work yourself backwards. That's what... Um, what I have coached with my team and it really eventually the system will be in place. So thank you again, Essie, for having me. I'm so glad I could share this because if this can help you guys, um, it just makes us stronger as a team and I love that. So if you have any questions, shoot them to me, message me, and I will share all those files so you guys can get started. Kristen. Okay, then I have I have a folder in the back, Kristen, for I do a one month um, refollow up and a three month refollow up. And usually by that point, they have reordered then. So I can move them to the reordered. So, and you could extend that. You know, if you get, if you're at your three month refollow up and, and you don't get a response, I would make another folder to just have them as a past customer and, um, be able to shoot them the new information when we have launches and things like that. I would keep them in your system somehow so that when we have new products coming, um, they're there. So thank you guys for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you soon. Goodbye.